Hello everyone, welcome to the NPTEL online certification course on fundamentals of food process engineering. So, we will continue with size reduction today. In our last class, uh, we have discussed the particle size distribution and today we will solve uh, one or two problem on particle size distribution and also we will see the energy requirement in size reduction. So, uh, so we have uh, seen that what are the different uh, equivalent diameter and what are the different method of particle size analysis. Out of that the most common which we often use in uh, food industry or in the lab analysis of the food uh, sample uh, for the particulate size distribution. So, we uh, refer the sieve analysis mostly and uh, we have mentioned that how the sieve sieves are stacked in one another there are different standard uh, mostly we follow the Taylor series uh, standard sieve, sieve analysis method where a set of sieves are there uh, the largest perforated perforation largest openings are at the top and the, the lowest uh, opening we are getting at the bottom and at the uh, bottom end we are getting a pan which is uh, just a collector there is no perforation in that. So, also this all such screens they are uh, categorized that uh, mesh per uh, square inch size. So, the opening per square inch that, uh, thereby they are defined. So, now the particle size distribution of a sample was measured and uh, the, the data are given. Okay. So, we need to calculate the different uh, you know diameters and the different uh, quantitative parameters of those distribution. So, here we will determine the number length mean particle diameter and length volume mean particle diameter. So, the expression of uh, this are um, are given in the in the previous slide. So, we will just apply the equations today here. This is the data given the size band in micrometer and number of particles n that is written on this size 0 to 4 uh, 30 number 4 to 8 microns 40 numbers 8 to 12 microns 90 numbers and so on. Lastly, we are getting uh, 28 to 32 uh, we are getting 15. So, if you look into the distribution you can see that uh, there is unimodal uh, frequency distribution you will get if you try to uh, draw the frequency with respect to the uh, particle size uh, diameter plot. So, uh, that is how it looks like. Now, number length mean particle diameter is expressed by summation of x n by summation of n. Okay. Uh, so, n is the uh, n is the number. Now, length volume mean particle diameter that is summation root over summation of x cube n by summation of x n. So, these are the formula. Now, we need to calculate this parameter. We have x that is the size we are having in micrometer. Okay. Now, uh, if you look into that we have we have this size fraction ok. So, we are taking the mean of this size fraction because we need to have one uh, one particular size that that we need to take as d or x ok. So, uh, and this is the number given to that. So, we will always take the mid value or, or the or the mean value of this size distribution. So, that is why we have taken here 2, 6, 10, 14, 18, 22, 26 and 30. Now, corresponding number of the particles in the earlier equation in the earlier class sometime you may get this uh, x in terms of d and x were used to represent the fraction. 
So, here since it is uh, used to uh, see the um, express the diameter. So, I am just mentioning it so that you will will not confuse with that. So, here x is the dimension characteristic dimension or the uh, equivalent dia of the particle those has been retained on the uh, partic particular uh, sieve size. So, 2, uh, 2 is having 30 numbers, 6 having 40 numbers, 10 micrometer having 90 numbers and so on. So, summation n is the total number of particle that is 540 and x into n we need to uh, use it here for length mean particle diameter calculation. So, x into n will multiply this with that and make the summation. Similarly, x cube n again will multiply x cube with n and to will get the x cube n as this one 3.47 into 10 to the power 6. So, then what we need to do is we need to plot this value in the equation. So, uh, number length mean particle diameter is coming as 8660 by 540. So, 16.04 micrometer. So, if you go by length mean diameter, so you are getting uh, the you know mean particle size somewhere here between 14 and 16. So, 100 and 120 particles are there and if uh, this is the number of particles. So, in between somewhere this size fraction will come and if you go by length volume mean particle diameter. So, you are getting root over this x cube n 1. So, this value 3.47 into 10 to the power 6 divided by summation x n 8.66 into 10 cube. So, 20.02 micrometer. So, 20.02 micrometer. So, this is lying somewhere the uh, this side. Okay. So, we can see that the based on different diameter we are getting slightly different uh, you know mean size and the number fraction. So, here we will get uh, somewhere in between these two. So, this is how we can represent our data. Now, fineness modulus again one very important concept which is very important in, in particulate uh, solid uh, analysis. So, fineness modulus is an empirical figure obtained by adding the total percentage of the sample of an aggregate retained on each of the specified series of sieve and dividing the sum by 100. Okay. Adding the total percentage of the sample of an aggregate retained on each of the sieve uh, of a specified series of the sieve and then dividing by 100 that will give the uh, value of fineness modulus. Fineness modulus indicate the uniformity of grind in the in resultant product. So, the average particle size d p in m m represented in terms of fineness modulus as d p will be equal to 0 0.135 into 1.366 to the power fineness modulus. So, fineness modulus which which indicate the uniformity of grind in resultant product. So, uniformity is defined by fineness modulus. Now, once we have the value of fineness modulus, the average particle size d p can be determined by this equation 0 0.135 into 1.366 to the power fineness modulus. Okay. So, let us have one uh, case analysis for that. We have a sieve number. 170, 50, 40, 30, 20, 15 and pan. So, 7 sieves and a pan this is the standard configuration that uh, we are having for this particular sieve. Then weight of the material retained on each sieve in the gram. So, all have passed through the 100 number sieve. So, this is 0. Then 1.4 gram retained on 70 number sieve. 16.7 gram retained on 50 number sieve, 36.7 gram retained on 40 number, 82.2 gram retained on 30 number sieve and uh, 96 retained on 20 and so on. Finally, in the pan we are getting 8.7. So, total is 249.7 this much gram. Now, 
uh, then what we need to do is we need to see that from the total how much fraction uh, or how much percentage is this 1.4 okay so first if if we go from the bottom pan we consider as 0 and number each of the consecutive upper sieve as uh, 1 2 3 up to 7 so this 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 defining the uh, number of sieve uh, from the starting from the pan okay now now in the pan what is written that is 8.7 so if we calculate the percentage written based on the total sample that is 3.5 percent then the 8 it will be 3.2 percent 96 gram will be 38.4 percentage 82.2 it is coming 32.88 percentage okay so, like that we will calculate all the percentage that is retained percent material retained. So, all the material that has been retained uh, on that on, on, on the sieve total material that is retained on the sieve. Okay. So, that we will count here only, only those retained on the sieve will take the total based on that and calculate the percentage uh, material retained on each sieve. Then we will add them. So, it is coming 274.2 total percent material retained. Okay. So, this exclude the material that is on the pan that is why we are getting uh, 274.2. Now, fineness modulus and average size will be 274.2 divided by 100. So, we are getting 2.74. So, if this is the fineness modulus, so what will be the dp? dp will be 0 0.135 into 1.366 to the power 2.74. So, we are getting 0 0.315 mm. Now, energy requirement. So, uh, since uh, we are increasing the surface area by uh, reduction of the size of the particle. Uh, so, in the very beginning uh, section where we are discussing the introduction of size reduction, we mentioned that this is our uh, most important goal that is to increase the surface area. Okay. Now, increase the surface area involves energy requirement, right? because whenever we want to uh, do any sort of work, so we are, we are uh, giving certain amount of energy in the uh, particle initially which is make them strain. So, that energy which we are applying that is stored in the particle and when it breaks into smaller particle. So, that energy is released in terms of creating the surface area and also in terms of creating the uh, heat. Uh, okay. uh, so, we if we want to uh, analyze the energy requirement, uh, we can we can calculate uh, first one parameter that is the crossing efficiency which is very often we used and it it uh, defined as the uh, surface energy created by crushing divided by the energy absorbed because of crushing okay so the input energy required e to reduce the size of the particle solid depends on the energy absorbed by the solid and also there are certain uh, frictional losses will be there and certain uh, material uh, which is which is uh, the equipment or the or the rotating part of the machines that will absorb certain amount of uh, uh, you know applied energy so because of those frictional losses will take also the mechanical efficiency eta m into consideration so the input energy that will give that will reduce the size of the particle okay depending on the energy absorbed for creating the surface and also the mechanical efficiency of the process which takes into account the frictional losses. Now, the energy transferred to the material is stored in the particle uh, as I said that internal stresses when the stored energy is released because of particle fracture part of it increase the surface uh, you know increment in the surface energy resulting from the uh, increased surface area and some are released as the heat energy. 
So, temperature rise because the heat energy is released that means that will cause the temperature rise of the particle uh, that are you know generated the larger part uh, smaller particles are generated larger surface area created. So, temperature rise may be an important technological issue with heat sensitive products. Thermoplastic substances and also the material with high fat content. So, this problem is addressed by air or water cooling of the mechanism using the cryogenic such as the liquid nitrogen or cryo milling. So, you might have heard that in case of uh, mini spice grinding this cryogenic grinding approach is being taken because the spices are mostly having uh, very uh, heat sensitive components and antioxidants etcetera. So, to preserve those we need an uh, environment which is which is very chill environment. So, sometime the uh, pre cooling environment or in the casing we need to circulate the uh, liquid nitrogen etcetera to reduce the uh, effect of the temperature generation in uh, during the size reduction. So, the total energy can be uh, expressed as the energy absorbed divided by the mechanical energy uh, mechanical efficiency and that is energy uh, absorbed is also can be represented as the energy required for the surface area creation divided by the crushing efficiency eta c. So, E s is the surface energy per unit area. Uh, so, uh, so, surface energy per unit area that means uh, joule per meter square and also sometime it is expressed as the uh, surface tension that is uh, Newton per meter okay. and A p is the surface area per unit mass of the surface area per unit mass of the product and A f is the feed surface area per unit mass respectively. Eta c is the crushing efficiency. So, energy d e required to produce a small change d x that means, the size fraction uh, size or the dimension of the material that is being reduced to the amount of d x okay, of the unit mass of material can be expressed as a power function of the size of the material. So, d e by d x will be equal to minus c into x to the power minus m. So, always it is you know inverse of the uh, material size because as small we want to perform the size of the material larger amount of the energy is required. So, that is why it is a normal uh, convention to uh, have the uh, energy required per unit uh, change in the dimension is always proportional to the inverse of some power of the uh, dimension uh, of the of the uh, linear dimension or the characteristic dimension. So, there are uh, three different laws of uh, size reduction that is used basically for addressing the different size fraction. So, one is the Rittinger's law this is based on the assumption that the energy required is proportional to the new surface area produced that is uh, the surface area if, if d e by d x is proportional to 1 by the dimension d square. So, it will be uh, m is equal to dimension uh, is square. So, m equal to 2. So, we are getting by integration energy e that is equal to a constant Rittinger's constant k r into 1 by x p that is the dimension of the product minus 1 by x f when the dimension of the feed. Okay. So, another law which is Kick's law and in this law is based on the assumption that the energy input is proportional to the size reduction ratio or linear dimension that is m equal to 1. So, this will become d e by d x equal to minus c into x to the power minus 1. So, by integrating this we are getting e equal to k k Kick's constant into ln of x f that is the dimension characteristic dimension of the feed to that of the product. And the last one is the bonds equation. Bond proposed that the work input is proportional to the square root of the surface volume ratio of the product. So, here m is taken as 3 by 2 and after integration we are getting energy requirement E is equal to 2 into 
k b which is bond constant into 1 by root over x p minus 1 by root over x f. So, uh, this is just like equation d by d x minus c into x to the power minus x to the power minus 3 by 2 and from that we are getting this equation by integrating. So, x f and x p are in meter bonds constant k b that is equal to 5 into w i. W i is the work index and is defined as the energy required to reduce unit mass of a material from an infinite size to a size where 80 percent of the material is below 100 micrometer. So, E equal to 0 0.3162 into work index into 1 by root over x p minus 1 by root over x f, x f and x p are in mm and Rittinger's equation tends to uh, apply for fine grinding and Kick's law, coarse grinding, Bond's law valid for the intermediate grinding. So, uh, here we will take one example where sugar crystals were ground from an average sorted diameter of 500 micrometer to powder with an average sorted diameter of 100 micrometer. Okay, the net energy consumption was 0 0.5 kilowatt hour per ton. What would be the net energy consumption for grinding the crystal to 50 micrometer powder? First is according to the Rittinger's law and second according to the Kick's law. So, x f will be 500 micrometer the feed size product we need to make 100 micrometer and another is uh, we require 50 micrometer. So, energy uh, net energy consumption in the first case was 0.5 kilowatt hour per ton we need to find E 2. Now, applying the Rittinger's law we can apply this equation E equal to k r into 1 by x p minus 1 by x f. So, 0 0.5 will be equal to k r into 1 by uh, x, x p is 1 by 100 minus 1 by x f is 500. So, from that we can get the uh, written just constant k r that is 62.5 kilowatt hour micrometer per ton. Now, using that we will calculate that what will be the uh, you know energy requirement for written just law by uh, making the particle to uh, smaller size of 50, uh, 50 micron. So, here we are getting 1.125 kilowatt hour per ton. Coming to the Kick's law, it will be again the ratio of uh, kk of ln of xf by xp divided by xf by xp where the p changes both the time. Now, for that we can uh, get this expression. So, ln of 500 by 50 divided by ln of 500 by 100 into 0 0.5. So, this we are getting 0 0.715 uh, kilowatt hour per ton. So, we will stop here and we will continue in the next class. Thank you.